Welcome. This is the module six, that is the week seven, and lecture number twenty-eight. And uh, we have just started the steel making, and I have talked about brief history about the steel making, and then I also talked about the slag structure and uh, important properties of the slag, like oxidation property, viscosity, and basicity. Now, in this lecture, we'll talk about some very important reaction that is relevant for the steel making. And their reaction equilibria. Now, in this lecture, the concept that will be covered first, I want to uh, introduce a concept of one weight person standard state because when you consider the reaction equilibrium and uh, in the liquid steel, you know the impurities percentage hardly exceeds one weight person. So, most of the impurities are within one weight person. So, very dilute solution. And uh, if we want to express the activity of the impurities with respect to pure solid at the standard state, then activity value become very, very less of the order of 10 to minus 3 minus 4. So, it become very inconvenient. So, usually a activity uh, for impurities in liquid iron is expressed in terms of 1 8 percent standard state. I will discuss about that and then I will talk about this oxidation of iron, oxidation of carbon, oxidation of silicon and manganese. Right? So, one weight percent standard states of impurities in liquid iron, as I said, the percentage of impurities in liquid iron hardly cross one weight percent. Most of them are one, much less than one weight percent, and silicon can be little bit high, one to one. That is also that is fine. Now, with reference to pure solid at the standard state, the activity of impurity will be very low values. Just now I said that is the usually that is the you know the Raoult's law. That is um, here you know the pure solid at the standard state. We consider that is the pure solid at the standard state because the activity do not have any, as you know, it does not have any absolute value. Activity always expressed in terms of some relative value with reference to some reference, right. So, here the reference is pure solid as the standard state. That is, if the solid is pure or the liquid is pure, we assign an activity is equal to 1, right. That is, activity and uh, activity is uh, for the Raoult's law, uh, that is that is that is the thing. And the Raoult's law is what? Raoult's law is basically says um, uh, for the ideal system, when you do not have any interaction between the impurity and the uh, solvent, solute and solvent, there is no interaction, then Raoult's law is valid. And under that condition, you can say activity is equal to the mole fraction, right? So, that is the Raoult's law, this is the Raoult's law state line, this activity is equal to mole fraction. Okay? So, pure solid, so when x i is equal to 1, then activity is equal to 1, that is the pure solid at the standard state. Right? Now, in actual system, in non-ideal system, your activity not equal to x i always case and activity is equal to gamma i into x i, because you have interaction between the solvent and the reactant, uh, solvent, uh, solute and solvent, there is an interaction, that is why it another term comes into picture that is called the activity coefficient. right? As a result, you have the activity uh, composition relation like this. This is the activity composition relation. right? And finally, when it is pure, then activity become 1, no problem. But in some other case, when there is a positive deficient, you have this uh, activity composition relationship is like this. So, this is the with respect to there is this is called the Raoultian scale activity activity is basically represent here in terms of a this is called the activity with the mole fraction this is usually the mole fraction x x i and the activity of i so if you can write it i and this is the x i versus activity so this is the relationship now you can see at infinite dilute solution in case of the dilute solution also another state line you can find that is a, a hindi's law is valid in this case you can find that is a this line is called the hindi's law line basically a straight line relationship between the activity and mole fraction that means in the very dilute solution activity again proportional to the mole fraction in in this case you can find that the gamma is changing gamma is con continuously changing with composition but here in this range, you can see gamma is constant, gamma is constant in infinite dilute solution, gamma is constant and it is called the uh, Hendy's law and it is called the Hendy's law activity coefficient. right? So, 
then it is that thing in this in case of the dilute solution you can write gamma is equal to gamma e naught into gamma e naught into x i t right this is the activity coefficient right. So, since it is there it is advantageous now uh, for dilute solution I can represent I can define another standard state because the state line relationships is there there is the activity is directly proportional to here you can find activity is directly proportional to the x i in this range. So, I can define another state line uh, another what is that called there is another standard state. So, Hendy's law is followed as I said and therefore, a convenient standard state may be defined in dilute solution right. How we can do that you can find that is the this thing that is you can see from here uh, if I just enlarge this portion just enlarge this portion and then I can get this ok. So, then this Raoult's law line goes like this and this is the Hendy's law line and then if you consider that this is the this is the straight line like this it goes this is the Hindi's law line so this is the Hindi's law line it goes like this and then if I consider that is the Hindi's law is valid up to this point up to 1 8 percent right up to 1 8 percent Hindi's law is valid and I can define a scale where uh, 1 8 percent standard state I can define where I can say that activity is equal to that is this 1 8 percent standard state we can say activity activity in another scale that is the Hindian scale is equal to the weight percent ok. So, we have defined another standard state when we say that is the activity is equal to 1 when weight percent is equal to 1. So, if the Hindi's law is valid up to this point up to 1 8 percent then you can define in another and another it is that call. So, you can define another activity h i is equal to you can say this is weight percent of i right that I said. So, this is called the activity coefficient on Hendian scale. So, this is the another scale this is not the Raoultian scale pure solid at the standard state that scale is not this is an another scale it is called the Hendian scale in that scale I can say that is the activity is equal to weight percent if Hendy's law is valid up to this point if Hendy's law is valid up to 1 8 percent that is it is a straight line portion then I can say there is the h i is equal to w i and if it is not valid that it can be found out like this. So, this you understand that is the h i is equal to w i another just another standard state we have uh, defined where activity in the Hindi scale become 1 when weight percent is 1 because up to this point because you have the Hindi's law is valid. If it is not valid also then we can if it is not valid like this yet there is a deviation in that case I can define that is your that is the h i f i into w i where f i is the activity coefficient ok f i is the activity coefficient uh, in the Hindian scale there is the activity coefficient in the Hindian scale and is the uh, resistance coefficient and then log there is the log of f i you have see this thermodynamic these correlations are there and where e represent the interaction coefficient of j on i and w is the weight percent of j and for j is equal to 1. So, multi component system you can calculate what is the interaction coefficient ok. So, activity coefficient on the Hindian scale you can define like this and there is a correlation between this activity and this activity also that is the h i that is the activity on the Hendian scale you can simply correlate with the activity on the Raoultian scale that is the pure solid at the standard state. And you have also a standard free energy change from the pure solid at the standard state to the 1 8 percent standard state if you know this will be the free energy change. So, so think is that what I said basically in short is that that uh, activity of the impurities it is very difficult to represent the activity of impurities on the Raoultian activity in terms of with respect to the pure solid at the standard state. If you represent that then the value will be very less may be of the order of 10 to minus 4 5 like that. So, it will be very uh, so for that for a convenient scale that is why we define the convenient scale for in at infinite dilution and it was possible because Hindi's law is there where basically the activity coefficient remain constant at dilute solution activity remain constant over a certain range and uh, 
So, we can define another scale where I say there is the activity is equal to 1 when weight percent is equal to 1 and if the Henry's law is valid up to 1 weight percent then this is thing and if Henry's law if the activity is actually deviate from the Henry's law up to 1 8 percent then we can represent h i is equal to f i into w i that is the thing we can do that. Okay. So, now so this is that is why the impurity is basically represented with respect to a different scale that is called the Henry scale. Okay. And then you can just make a corresponding change into the free energy change. Okay. Standard free energy change for this scale change you have also delta g naught value. So, you can always make the delta g naught value uh, for a reaction if you just uh, change the activity uh, scale, if you just change the activity scale from pure solute at the standard state from to the 1 8 percent standard state, you have to make only change in the standard free energy change, this value you have to add there. So, with that you can do that. Now, let us consider the oxidation of iron. Now, you can consider the oxidation of iron, you can simply consider this reaction Fe FeO Fe reaction, you can consider Fe plus dissolved oxygen forming the FeO and the, now you can see the equilibrium constant is represented you know as the ratio of activities of the product to that of the reactant. Now, you can see that on the uh, activity of FeO I have represented with, refer with reference to Raoultian scale that means with pure solid at the standard state where and also the activity of iron also we have considered that is the with the pure solid at the standard state because iron is 95 percent weight percent uh, in the liquid iron iron is 95 percent. So, it is very pure form. So, I can write like this, but we have represented the activity of dissolved oxygen with respect to Hendian scale that is the HO that is the activity of dissolved oxygen in the Hendian scale we have written here because of convenience then the activity value will be between 0 1 or of the order of 1 it is very convenient. Okay. So, only for that if I just change the activity scale if I change the uh, standard state to represent the activity, then I have to make a sudden change in the delta G naught as well as, well as there will be a change in the equilibrium value, right? This equilibrium constant value also there will be change. So, so this value what you can find here that is the log of KFE this value and if I represent the activity of dissolved oxygen with respect to Raoultian standard state then this expression could have been different little different. Okay. And this expression now what we can see it is basically considering that the dissolved oxygen is being represented on the Hendian scale. So, it is not a problem. So, uh, if you have the proper KFE, KFE value you can do that. So, now let us see now from this equation what you can do we can calculate the equilibrium constant at a particular temperature and then I can calculate the HO. H O means that is the activity of dissolved oxygen on Hendian scale and H O become W O if the Hendy's law is valid up to 1 8 percent, right? H O become W O. So, you can directly calculate what is the value of W O because activity of F E O uh, you may consider 1 if you consider F E O is equal to 1 or activity of F E you can take it 1 because it is the major bulk into the liquid iron. So, you can consider activity of F is equal to 1, activity of FU taking at 1 and KF you can calculate. So, simply you can calculate the dissolved oxygen into the bath from this equilibrium. So, for pure FU the equilibrium oxygen contained in liquid iron you can calculate at different temperature 1550, 1600 and 1650 using this formula and you will get the value of 1850233029002900 ppm like this. Okay. And typically the activity of FeO in steel making slag is 0.5. So, if you take activity of FeO 0.5, then this value will be just half. So, at 1600 degree centigrade it will be 1165, right. So, of the value. Now, this is the oxygen that you can theoretically calculate. Now, actually the oxygen content in the turn down sample is around 800 to 1000 ppm. Turn down sample it is around 8000 to 1000, which is lower than the saturation value at the steel making temperature because we know we have calculated the saturation value theoretically and we find it value is 1165, but the turn down sample in the 
tap steel it is around 800 to 100 ppm. So it is always less than the saturation value. What is happening? Think is that because this equilibrium is at the slag metal interface, right? So dissolved oxygen, what you are finding that is at the interface. Now this dissolved oxygen has to diffuse or has to be transported and to be mixed up with the rest of the liquid. Okay, then only you can get a higher value. But problem is that your mass transfer is rate controlling. This is the mass transfer. You cannot you cannot mix up the interface dissolved oxygen immediately. As the FU is decomposing, that is the as the FU is that is the giving this dissolved oxygen, this the equilibrium oxygen at the slag metal interface, that oxygen not being able to cup to the interior of the bath or mixed up with the bath immediately because the mass transfer limitation. That is why that is your turn down sample oxygen concentration appears to be less. So, what happens? There is a build up of oxygen, dissolved oxygen at the slag metal interface and that oxygen will not remain like that. What it will do? It will basically oxidize the iron oxide to the Fe2O3 higher oxide because over oxidation. So, it shows the slag is over oxidized. How this is the re reaction you can consider? This is the reaction that will take place the FeO plus oxygen forming Fe2O3. Okay. So, this, this reaction will take place and there is an evidence also that is the if you see the steel making slag you can find that is Fe3 to Fe2 ratio that is the ferric to ferrous ratio of the order of 0.3 to 0.5. That means it is not in the form of ferrous form that is Fe, it is in the form of Fe2 or 3 also. And uh, that means this reaction goes on there because this reaction goes on because you have a lot of dissolved oxygen near the interface and that is not being able to transport to the rest of the liquid metal as a result they are getting, they are oxidizing the FeO2, Fe2O3. So, the slag remain over oxidized and always oxidizing to metal and one thing is that and if you want to calculate, now since Fe2O3 is there, Fe2O3 has a much more higher partial pressure that is the decomposition or you can say uh, uh, oxidation potential compared to that of the FeO also. In Nillingham diagram, Fe2O3 is much above than that of FeO. So, this equilibrium you can calculate then this partial pressure of oxygen will be little higher maybe. Okay. So, this reaction, uh, this uh, reaction may be considered that is the partial pressure of oxygen for this reaction may be responsible for the chemical potential of the slag, not for FeFu equilibrium okay. because this reaction is also taking place and then Fe2O3 is a much higher oxidation potential. So, so this partial pressure of oxygen will be greater and um, this can be considered. But basically by this reaction, you, your oxidation potential of the slag can be measured also. So, this may be the appropriate reaction. Okay. Silicon reaction is like this, there is a silicon reacting with the dissolved oxygen forming the silica and this equilibrium constant can be right in terms of the activity relationship like this. And here we can find that activity of silica divided by weight percent directly we are writing the weight percent of silicon and weight percent of oxygen square. That means here we are assuming that is the Hendy's law is valid. First of all this activity, activity of silicon has been expressed in terms of Hendian activity scale as well we consider that is the activity coefficient is equal to 1. That means Hendy's law is valid. Okay. So, if under considering the Hindi's law's value is there is the activity of the impurities in Hindi scale can be written in terms of the weight percent of impurities. So, that is what we have done. So, activity of silica divided by this thing and then silicon there is a equilibrium coefficient of silicon in terms of temperature can be given by this correlation and then we can simply calculate taking activity of that is the for lime saturated slag it has been found activity of SiO2 is very less because the activity of SiO2 is less because it combined with the calcium forming very strong compound like dicalcium silicate, tricalcium silicate those are very strong. As a result free concentration of SiO2 or the activity of SiO2 decreases significantly. So, for lime saturated slag activity of if I take this thing activity this thing and then simply we can calculate the silicon concentration considering the turn down oxygen ppm into the bath. Okay. So, for 800 ppm of oxygen in the turn down sample if you consider weight percent of silicon in the metal that is the percentage of silicon in the metal is less than 1 ppm. So, thermodynamically, so for lime saturated slag percentage of silicon into the metal can be reduced 
below 1 ppm. It is easily possible to bring it down to below 1 ppm, but it is quite difficult to bring it down below 50 ppm, 30 to 50 ppm because of kinetic limitation. So, that is there. In practice, silicon in the turn down sample is around 30 to 50 ppm. It is due to kinetic limitation because when the silicon is decreasing, then transport of silicon from the bath to the interface because all this reaction take place some heterogeneous interface like slag metal interface. So, silicon has to transport from the bulk to the slag metal interface, then will it can react. And when the silicon percentage decreases, then the transport of silicon become uh, much more difficult because become very uh, as a result because of this mass transfer limitation. So, you cannot bring it down to more than 30 to 50 ppm. Okay. So, that is the one thing. Otherwise, silicon oxidation is very simple in steel making that we can find. Now, come to the oxidation of carbon. Oxidation of carbon again you can write this thing that is the dissolved carbon and dissolved oxygen reacting and forming a this second bracket means there is the gaseous product. Whatever the CO we are forming is the gaseous. This is the very unique product, unique oxidation product of impurities. Because in this sense, because only carbon when get oxidized produce a gaseous product. Otherwise, all the impurities like silicon, manganese, phosphorus all produce a solid product and they are they have to be accumulated into the slag. But this carbon oxidation it forms a gas and it goes away from the slag, um, goes away from the goes away to the atmosphere as a gas. So, as a result you do not have to retain this oxidation product and other cases you have to keep this oxidation product into the slag. So, slag volume increases. So, carbon oxidation does not give any slag volume increase or nothing like that. Anyway, it has another advantage also this is the only reaction which can be influenced significantly by the pressure because the right hand side is a gas. So, and the equilibrium constant can be given like this. Again, the denominator impurity concentration, there is the impurity activity is defined in terms of Hindian scale and F c F naught are the activity coefficient of carbon and oxygen respectively in Hindian scale and W naught W c are the weight percent of oxygen and carbon respectively, P c o is the partial pressure of C o. Now, again you can write simply in this way and if you take F c and F naught for the time being as 1, you can calculate then P c, K c are correlated and uh, Kc you can calculate from there as a, at a particular temperature at 1600 degrees centigrade you know the Kc value. If F not Fc you take 1 then simply you can calculate and partial pressure of, uh, depending on the what is the partial pressure of CO your uh, value of Wc that is the dissolved um, carbon into the bath can vary. And turn down WO you can take the turn down sample around 800 ppm and based on that you can calculate the value of carbon concentration into the bath. Okay. And these are basically at different temperature as I said at different pressure you have different correlation the solubility product WC into W naught is basically a constant at a particular pressure and temperature. At particular pressure P c is constant at particular temperature K c is constant and activity coefficient for a particular composition is also constant. So, solubility product left hand side is a constant. So, oxygen percentage and carbon percentage. So, you can see at different pressure this is the solubility product line like this. So, obviously, as the pressure decreases, so you can keep a very low activity of oxygen and carbon is possible to maintain into the bath. So, this is the line at one atmospheric pressure this is the line that is that is that is being followed and one atmospheric pressure and uh, at 1600 B line you can consider for 1600. So, this thing. So, most interestingly at 1600 degree centigrade and if you assume F c is equal to 1, F naught is equal to 1 and percentage of oxygen in the turn down sample to be 800 ppm, then the equilibrium carbon in the metal is estimated at 200 ppm. Okay. So, 200 ppm you can load down the dissolved carbon, this is the carbon by oxidation you can load down the carbon level in the bath to the 200 ppm. Below that it is not possible even at one atmospheric pressure at a particular temperature at 1600 degree centigrade one atmospheric pressure you can load the carbon to the 250 ppm only. Below that it is not thermodynamically possible. 
And since uh, and one thing since the LD kinetics is very fast then bringing down the carbon to the equilibrium level is possible. What I wanted to mean you can attain this 250 ppm in LD also because in LD kinetics is very fast because of emulsion formation and you can assume that it will come to an equilibrium. So, then 250 ppm you can achieve that is possible, but below 250 ppm if you want to make 50 ppm, 100 ppm carbon still it is not possible at all in the LD which runs at one atmospheric condition. Okay. So, that I have said, but it is not possible to bring down the carbon in still below 250 ppm by LD process that take place at one atmospheric pressure. So, if you want to make a very ultra low carbon steel like for stainless steel or something else uh, IF steel. So, in that case you have to help take the help of vacuum because this reaction will respond to the vacuum very significantly because the product is a gash. So, under vacuum we can easily lower down the carbon percentage to a very low value. So, you can see on the order of 10 to minus 2 weight percent is not a very difficult thing that is of the order of 20 ppm, 30 ppm of the order of 2 that is 30 ppm still you, you can easily do that under vacuum. <coughs> but under under only still making condition that is not possible that is the very important message is there. Now, I will come to the next that is the manganese oxidation and uh, manganese oxidation manganese also a very unique impurity in sense that is the manganese when get oxidized from manganese oxide and manganese oxide is a basic oxide unlike silicon and the phosphorus they basically form a acidic oxide. And they can be easily retained into the slag by using the basic uh, that is the by using lime uh, by using lime because lime is a basic oxide strong basic oxide and they can easily form compounds with the silica as well as P2O5 and they can be retained into the slag without their reversion into the uh, liquid metal. But basic oxide MNO MNO cannot form a very strong compound with the lime because lime is also a basic oxide, calcium oxide is a basic oxide, MNO is a basic oxide, their activity coefficient basically not less than 1, it will be greater than 1 because they will repel each other. That is the problem that is the MNO cannot be uh, very easily kept into a basic slag. If the slag is acidic, then MNO can be kept in because it is a basic oxide in acidic, acidic slag it can be, it can form compound and it can be retained into the slag. But if it is basic slag, when you form a basic slag, then retaining amino is very difficult. Okay? So, that is from physically, this is the uniqueness of the, that is the unique impurity in the, uh, unique impurity in liquid iron okay, that forms on oxidation a basic oxide. All other oxides are acidic oxide. So, and then that is you can write the K min that is your equilibrium constant you can write in this activity correlation like this and then you can write K min prime that is called the equilibrium quotient then when I write in terms of the percentage weight percentage weight percentage M n o by percentage of F u by percentage of M n right. So, considering the activity coefficient equal to 1 ok. And also the mole fraction converted to the percentage of MNO here and mole percentage of mole fraction of FU converted to the percentage of MNO here. So, these are only a uh, constant relation with the help of a constant you can take care of. So, so basically K means converted to K in prime that is called the equilibrium quotient K in prime okay? and you can write this activity relation in terms of the concentration relations. Okay? And then this is equal to you can simply write again the K min into and here if you can take that hmm, you can correlate with the equilibrium constant and the activity coefficient relationship because the activity of FU you can write mole fraction of FU into gamma FU and activity of MNO also mole fraction of FU into gamma FU uh, like that. So, from there you can come to this thing, you can simply write this relationship, it is not that is what I am telling that is you can simply write A M N O X M N O into gamma of M N O write this. So, 
So that's why it is coming. And uh, similarly, your uh, activity of FU also, mole fraction of FU and the gamma FU, that way you can write. And then you can write this Kmn of this thing is this side. Okay. So then you can write, this is the partition coefficient, you can write in terms of weight percent of Mn in the slag divided by the weight percent of Mn into the metal. And to be very precise, it should be Dmn should be represented as, that is the percentage of Mn in the slag divided by percentage of Mn in the metal. That can be, you can write it as some constant time percentage of MnO by percentage of Mn. Okay. So, this is the, so this is the way Dmn you can write in terms of the percentage of Mn in the slag divided by percentage of Mn in the metal or percentage of Mn in the slag by this thing. This is a constant called the factor of constant. Okay. So, that is called the partition coefficient and then partition coefficient you can simply correlate with the percentage of FU into Kmn and gamma FU over gamma MnO. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, now you can find that partition coefficient, partition coefficient depends on this gamma FU by gamma MnO ratio. Now, you can see both are basic oxide, FU and the MnO both are the basic oxide. So, with increase in basicity, it is expected that gamma FU will increase and the gamma MnO both are supposed to get increased okay, with increase in the basicity, gamma MnO by gamma FnO. But here you can find there is the ratio that is the gamma FU by gamma FU, MnO, this ratio basically decreases and then it becomes constant at a particular value beyond that thing it does not change. So, it decreases because MnO become higher than that of the FU. So, response of MnO with the basic oxide is more, that is the gamma MnO increases more compared to the gamma FU, increase in the gamma FU. That is the basic nature of MnO is more than that of the FU that it shows. So, as a result what happens? So, it decreases, the ratio decreases. So, that is the rate of rate of change of increase in gamma MnO is greater than that of FU. So, denominator become more with increase in basicity, so it decreases. So, and then after that time, after certain basicity, this thing. So, so fine, you can get that. So, at high basicity, what happens is that this value become very low. As a result, DMN become low. So, if you decrease this value, this become low. So, partition coefficient become low. Partition coefficient low means there is the percent of women in the slag become less and MN into the metal become high. Okay, so, that is the way. So, what happens then basic slag DMN decrease, it means that some of the MnO in the slag that will revert back to the metal phase. That is the percentage MnO decreasing means with increase in basicity means that is the sum of the MnO is reverting back to the metal. So, as a result that is the percentage MnO also mean in the metal increases and percentage MnO in the slag decreases. So, this decreases. So, what I want to mean is that basically if you decrease this value basically what you are doing, you are decreasing this value and you are increasing this value. So, this is what is happening. So, under basic slag condition, so what you get, given the partition coefficient becomes minimum in the basic slag condition, right, that is true. And it invokes, that is the manganese reversion in the steel melt, that is here, so some manganese reversion take place. So, basic slag condition manganese reversion take place, that is the sum of the manganese oxide into the slag breaks to manganese and the manganese goes into the, because manganese, the, because MnO do not become comfortable in the basic slag, their activity increases. So, obviously, since their activity increases, they, this reaction, if the activity increases, this reaction move in the backward direction, simple thing is that. As you increase the basic basicity, your MnO activity of MnO increases and then reaction move in the backward direction. So, that basically happens. So, it is simple. And you can see here the we have plotted the uh, what is called that is the partition that is the uh, manganese capacity of the slag. Manganese capacity of the slag is defined as you can see percentage MnO by percentage Mn that means the partition coefficient and it is normalized with respect to the percentage of FU. 
because obviously if Fe is higher the manganese will be oxidized more. Okay. So, at a particular oxidation then you cannot consider you cannot calculate the capacity of the slag. Capacity of the slag you have to normalize with respect to the percentage of Fe that is for a. So, in this case this value basically will be independent on the independent of percentage of Fe in the slag that is the oxidation um, property of the slag right. So, oxidation state of the slag. So, then it will only represent the capacity of the slag how much manganese the slag can hold at a particular oxidation potential of the slag is called the part uh, that is called the holding capacity of manganese or that is called the uh, manganese capacity of the slag. So, it is defined as partition coefficient with respect to the right normalized with respect to the oxidation power of the slag that means at a particular oxidation power of the slag. So, how much manganese a slag can hold that can be represented by this term. Okay. So, this value you can find and this is the basicity and basicity is not the common basicity you can find a percentage of CO plus 1.4 percentage of MgO because after CO, CO is the most uh, influential basic oxide into the slag and then MgO is there because other oxides are not that effective in uh, capturing the manganese into the slag and divided by the SiO2 plus 0.84 of P2O5. So, this is the way the basicity has been defined and you can find that in the acidic acidic open heart furnace that is the acid open heart furnace manganese capacity is maximum because the slag is acidic and when the slag become basic like BOA basic there is a basic open, open heart in all these case the activity become very low. So, you can find capacity of the slag for manganese capacity of the slag become low. Okay, so, under basic slag condition the manganese capacity is quite low and acid slag condition the manganese capacity is high it is obvious. So, manganese capacity become minimum for the basic slag. So, you can uh, this is the two book E. T. Tagdagan fundamentals of steel making very good books and from here we have taken some figures and ghost strategy. And uh, conclusion first conclusion is that the turn down oxygen in the tapped steel from LD is found to be much lower is not much less lower than that of the saturation value. And we have seen there is a turn down sample the oxygen percentage is around 800 to 1000 ppm and uh, at the uh, 1600 degree centigrade calculated value from thermodynamics it is around 1165. So, it is less than the saturation value and it indicates basically over oxidation of the slag. Okay, the slag is over oxidized because the oxygen from the interface not being able to penetrate into the bath as fast as it is producing at the interface as a result uh, the oxygen that oxygen there is the accumulated oxygen oxidized the Fe2 to Fe2O3 and the slag get over oxidized as a result slag remain always oxidizing to the metal. And it is difficult to lower the carbon content in liquid steel below 250 ppm by the LD steel making which take place under one atmospheric condition. So, if we want to make very low carbon steel we have to go for the vacuum and under vacuum CCO reaction carbon uh, there is the carbon oxidation response very significantly because the product gas is product oxide is gas and silicon can safely be reduced to 50 ppm under basic steel making condition. And manganese reversion is likely to take place under basic slag because manganese oxide is a basic oxide. So, under basic slag condition activity of amino in the slag increases as a result activity of amino increases as a result the reaction in the reverse direction proceeds and forming manganese. Okay. So, so, this is uh, about this um, uh, some basic uh, oxidation reaction like iron oxidation, carbon oxidation, silicon oxidation and the manganese oxidation. In the next lecture, I will talk about the dephosphorization. Thank you.